Okay. So it was before. Okay. Because we recruited a wonderful black candidate, Gene Beauregard, yeah. and Willie Lipscomb, who is now a, a, has been for years a judge right. in Detroit. We recruited these young black, beautiful people, enthusiastic people who wanted to go and and in this action center. And right. the whole theory was, how can we as a party help the people in the just I remember stuff of helping Mother Waddles, for instance. Right, right. Uh, it was the idea of volunteerism. Uh, volunteerism and organized volunteerism absolutely. by the party. And we hired a identified. young man by the name of John Martilla. And he was from out of state, right? He, he was from out of state. He lived in Gross Point. He was out of state. Well, he left out of state. Didn't he come from Boston? Wasn't he from Boston, he may Massachusetts? Have. I, yeah. I don't really remember, but he, he's still active today. Isn't he, he still works with Joe Biden and managed most of Joe Biden's Senate campaign. The vice president. Well, it's unbelievable. So, uh, so this is the same guy, and he came here. This is the same here guy who came here and organized the center, center and ran the the, the center uh, for us. Um, we did a lot of good. The problem they both all folded after three years, though. Why? The rhetoric of Richard Nixon and Spiro Agnew just drove the people you were trying to attack to the Republican Party. People like Martilla, you were trying to attract to the Republican Party. It just disgusted them. The Gene Beauregards, the Willie Lessons, the John Martellas, all said they I left. had enough, and they, they left. left. And that's where it fell. Okay, so we get into 1968, and in 1968, uh, running for the presidency, there's no constitutional office on the ballot in 68, governor, no. lieutenant, governor, attorney general, secretary of state. <laughs> Um, there wasn't even a U.S. Senate race, I don't believe, that year. That's right. But uh, there, was the, there was the presidential race. Right. And you had Richard Nixon emerge from nowhere. People thought he was politically finished um, and win the Republican nomination, beating Ronald Reagan, actually. Ronald Reagan came as close to Nixon as anybody. Right. Uh, there was the famous... Uh, I mean, I think there Reagan was a, had come to prominence with a campaign right. fundraising spot he had done for Goldwater in '64. Right, right. And so Reagan's a nominee, Biden. and Hubert Humphrey's the Democratic nominee. Uh, what happened here in Michigan? Uh, Emil Lockwood, the state senate majority leader, was he running? He the, was the Nixon campaign okay. chairman in Michigan. What was your relationship with the Nixon campaign in 68? Was it better than your relationship had been with the Goldwater people back in 64? I think anything <clears throat> in, anything would have been better than the Goldwater thing. You weren't getting as much hate mail? No. Well, anyways, the peop everybody was united around Nixon. Yeah. Amo was good to work with, yeah. as far as I can remember. Yeah. Uh, the problems became started in the National Convention in Miami. Uh, when, well, the party, when Nixon named the governor of Maryland, Spiro Agnew, as his vice president. Right. The first one, well, I didn't think it was bad at the time. Agnew was recognized as a quote unquote moderate governor. He must be okay. Well, the first one to go ballistic was Don Regal. Oh, he went crazy with this guy Agnew. Romney wasn't too happy. I couldn't figure out why. And then Romney's name was, as I remember, was put in nomination also, and, and they could beat him. Uh, but so there was... Maybe Romney had gotten to know Agnew as fellow than governor. Anybody else had. Yeah. That's right. That, that's right. <laughs> but we, as yeah. uh, not a governor, you couldn't figure out why he was upset with that. This was all in a turbulent layer. In the, there was a presidential primary, and... George, I think it was 68, it was a George Wallace, won the Democratic primary. George Wallace, the far right governor of Alabama, won the primary in a UAW state. Well, I think that was 72. That was 72. 72. Okay, I just, okay. That was okay. later. That you was, had the Chicago Convention. Well, Bobby Chicago, Kennedy had been assassinated. Uh, Bobby Kennedy had been assassinated. Hubert yeah. Humphrey, you know. And, uh, and Martin Luther King had been assassinated. Yeah. It was a turbulent time. The anti-war and the hippies, everybody else descended on Chicago. Right. And they had, well, they had what ended up being a riot in the park across the street from the Chicago Hilton. And the interesting thing is, as we're doing this on videotape, in 1968, the only thing was film. You shot the film, the TV cameraman shot the film, they shot the film, and somebody raced the film 
by hand to a, the TV station put on the air. The riots broke out, and they were devastating and disgusting, and on TV they were terrible. By the time, the, some of the riots were already over, but by the time it hit the, the television, it was also hitting the floor of the Democratic Convention, and the delegates of the convention were going nuts. The Democratic Party was devastated by this stuff. Mm -hmm. And in fact, our, in my opinion, our uh, political process today is still affected by the, conven by the riots in the park in Chicago in 1968. The Democrats, after it was over, appointed a committee under the, the chairmanship of George McGovern. It was called the McGovern Committee. It was to redo the things so that this never would happen again. The delegate selection process. The delegate process. selection process. Yeah. And, of course, the process had to be that everybody had to have a say whether they knew what they were doing or not. Mm -hmm. And so they so restructured the thing that in, in, in 1960 and 64, and I think probably 68, three states had a primary of any significance. Yeah. It was West Virginia, it was Wisconsin, right. and California. Right. Now you have every state having primaries, et cetera, and it all resolves out of the, the attempt by the Democrats to rewrite the rules on delicate selection out of that 60, 60. Yeah, I think you saw a lot of reference to that last year in the fight between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama for the Democratic That's right. nomination. That's right. Uh, the unit rule, so to speak, right. Uh, right. where winner take all, right. uh, in some cases, uh, gives somebody a big advantage when they only won fifty one forty nine. They get all the delegates. And that all, and that all grew out, out of that. All goes yeah. out of that. Yeah. And I've always said, you know, smoke. I was in a lot of smoke filled rooms. A lot of smoke filled rooms gave us Theodore Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, and Harry Truman, and Dwight Eisenhower. You know, the smoke filled rooms couldn't have been all bad. But out of this, we got the McGoverns, we got the uh, uh, McCarthy's, and, and all yeah. of the other people yeah. who brought the Democrat yeah. and almost brought the Democratic yeah. Convention Good to question. and Jimmy Carter almost brought the country to a room. Let me let me ask you this: Did you have any experience as early as '68 with some of the people around Richard Nixon, like Bob Haldeman? Did he ever come into Michigan? The first, uh, Nixon came to Grand Rapids and was speaking in the, the hall in Grand Rapids, and I walked into the room, and a guy, I looked, this crew-cutted guy st standing by the door next to me, I said, I don't know who this guy is, but if they put a brown shirt on him, he'd have done good <laughs> in Berlin. I never changed my opinion. That was Bob Haldeman. He looked like a Nazi stormtrooper. <laughs> and... and and, well, let me ask you and, this. And that was a preclude until four years hence. In 1960, Richard Nixon lost to John Kennedy here in Michigan for the presidency by a pretty narrow margin. But in 68, even with this horrible Democratic National Convention, which was a disaster for their party, Hubert Humphrey managed to carry Michigan by a bigger margin over Richard Nixon in 68 than he had, or the Democrats had, eight years earlier. Why did that happen? I don't remember enough of 68 because I was vice chairman of actually, but I remember 72 so well. We had come to the conclusion by 72 that Nixon, for some reason, hated Michigan. <laughs> and did you in 68? You don't even remember him really campaigning here very much. He totally ignored the state. He, he, he totally ignored, ignored the state. Yeah. Well, that yeah. must have been tough on Lockwood, his it campaign been, manager in Michigan, been. when he, he wasn't been. even here. And if, if I can jump ahead and make <laughs> yeah. a comparison to yeah. 72. In 72, I believe, he, I knew we could carry the state, but I didn't think he did. So I went to Washington and sat down with the people in the White House, specifically a guy by the name of Fred LaRue, who went to jail over Watergate, and said, and Jack Gibbs, a former executive director of the state party, was appointed as their staff person in Michigan. Of the Nixon of campaign? Of the Nixon campaign in okay, Michigan. Yeah. And I said to LaRue, I said, I will carry the state for you, but you've got to let us run the campaign. And they did. And it was a different thing because, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no problem with politics if everybody's on the same page. Jack Gibbs was like, like another guy, like Larry Lindenberg, from, had been at Syracuse, New York. And we all got along great together and ran a campaign that meshed. Well, probably Gibbs, being from Michigan, helped a lot. Absolutely. 